Hello and welcome back to our JRPG series. In this episode, we're going to work on our saving and loading system. So we can take items that we win and earn and use in one battle into the next battle with us. So let's get started. So for our save system, we need to first of all make a game instance. So we're going to create a new blueprint class and go into search classes. We're looking for a game instance. Is the normal one like there, and we call this one uh, JRPG game instance. And we're also going to need to have a save game system. So we go to movement class, search for save game object, and to select, and we call this one um, save game file or save game data. We'll call it. Okay, so in the JRPG game instance, we're going to right click and add an init function event. So if you want to know full details about how saving and loading works in video games, you can find details about it on my channel. Just search for saving and loading. You'll find several videos about it. But nonetheless, we'll do a quick run through anyway on here. So on the event init here, we need to know what save file we need to load up. So on the variables here, we're going to look and call this one save file name. That would be a string. Hit compile. And this string here is going to be uh, save slot one, we'll call it. Now you could have multiple save slots. In that case, this would be an array. And you want to know which ones you've got from that. But more on that another time. So here we've got save slot one. And we're going to drag out from init here. Does save game exist? Just going to check to see whether or not at the start of the game a save file exists already. We're going to drag our save slot name in there and that would turn true or false. We'll put that into a branch. If it's true, we're going to load that save file. So we're going to do load save game from slot. We're going to use the async load game from slot. And what async means is basically going to do it and do it in the background whilst it carries on doing other stuff. So we're going to drag from there, put that in there. The slot name can be a save file name. When it's completed, we're going to take the save game file here and we're going to do a cast to save game data, which is our custom save game object. And this is going to go to not to the top bit, but to the completed bit. And we're going to store this save game data as a variable. Call it save game data. Okay. And on the force of this branch, then we want to create a save game object. So create save game object. We're going to choose our one from the list, save game data, and we're going to set it to our save game data object. Like so. So now we've got that save game data stored in our memory in the form of this save game object. So basically the way it works is that all data that's on that save game object is accessible and readable by anything we want because it's on a game instance. So let's go to the save game object and think about the things we want to stay, store on here. So the one thing we want to store on here definitely is going to be the inventory of the characters or the, of the player rather. So on the variables here, we're going to do a new variable and we call this one player inventory. And this is going to have to match the same variable type as we have got for that same variable in our player controller. So it has to be a map and it has to be of item base and integer. So in a save game object, do item base as the key, we do class reference, change that to a map, and integer is what we want for the values. Compile. Now we also want to store details about the uh, player characters that we are getting to and from the battle. So what I'm going to do is create a struct to store that data in. I'm going to go into uh, my data folder here and make a data struct. And we call this one player info struct. Uh, or actually, we'll call it um, character info. Character info. Okay, in here, we need to know the uh, XP they have. XP current. And that's going to be a integer. We also need another variable and this one is going to be their level, their unit level. 
again an in integer um and you, if you want to store the health between value uh, between battle as well you can do that here too go to new variable and store hp current and store also mp current we've got those all now on this struct here save that and close this you want to make sure those value types match what you've got in your various places here so if i go to unit base here i can see that hp current max and mp current max are all set to floats so i want to go back to that struct there and make change those to floats so hp current float mp current float unit level so yeah that's on the combat component here and if i go down to unit stats here unit level is integer and then we've got the xp current and xp current is set to um da, da, da. Where is it? Uh, XP. The XP can't here set to the integer. So those two can be left the same. Save that and go to my save game object. And in here, we make a new variable, and this can be a uh, party uh information and in here i'll make the key type here a unit base and choose party unit base class reference and then the value here is going to be my struct i made so i'm going to go to character info struct compile and save that now my save game object here i'm going to make a functions to help me do the loading and saving of this so first of all let's take saving into account if I want to save a party information across, I want to create a custom event in here or function, make it a function if you want. And we'll call this one save um, party unit information. And for this, we need a couple of inputs. The first input here is going to be the party unit itself. So we're going to go um, party unit. And that's going to be the party unit reference. So party unit base object reference we then want to add in here their party information struct so that would be um information oh yeah information and type for that would be information i uh, know what's it called uh player data was it character info there we go character info struct okay and we want to get this into this uh map here so with part unit i'm going to get the class of this get class and we're going to take the party information out here and i'm going to do add and what this is going to do is going to replace whatever value we've currently got in there with this new value so we're going to put that in there and the value is going to come from information there nice and easy put that in there then we have to tell this thing to save this uh, whole game, uh, this whole uh, data here to the save file. So here we're going to do save game to slot. And the slot name here, I'm actually going to set on my uh, class variables here. I'll make a new variable. I'm going to call this one slot name. And this will be a string. And set that to a singular variable. I'm going to drag that into slot name. Now, slot name by default is blank, and we want it to be dynamic enough to change it on the game instance. So if we go back to the game instance, after I've set the save game object on both of these, I want to drag out from there and do set slot name. And that is going to be equal to the save file name. Copy this and paste it up here. And plug that into there. So the save game data now will save our object here. The save game object is self. And that's it. So now we need to load data. So we make another custom event. This is going to be called load uh, party unit information. And again, we're going to need to know which unit we want to send it to. 
So we're going to do party unit. And we want that to be the party unit base. Object reference. And we want to search our party information. So drag out party information. And we want to get the class of the party unit. And we're going to search and find the information from there. Find the matching information here. And now I'm going to send that across to my party unit. So on the return value for this, uh, so sorry, we're going to need to take the, um, the party unit here and um, set the various settings that we have on our information here. I'm going to break this. And we're going to take the party unit and set HP current. And that's going to be set to HP current. We're going to set MP current. And plug that into MP current. I then want to get the combat component of this as well. So combat component. And we're going to drag that across and do set XP current. That would be equal to that one. And then finally, uh, set unit level. That's going to go in from the unit level there. Now, this looks really messy with all these lines going everywhere. So one way to tie this up is to turn this into a function. So I'm going to select all this, right click, collapse the function. And compile. And I'm going to rename this equals that. And let's go into that function. So let's fix the information that's coming into here. We're going to take the party unit here, put it into get class. Um, we're going to remove all the other information here. We don't need all of that. And instead of using this, what we're going to do is drag out a party unit variable. Now this refers to the parameter that's happening over here. So rather than dragging out loads of lines, I can just drag out loads of these little things. That's that. And I can put this here, these two. Well, save. There you go. And that will now load, when we call that function, we'll load that data into the party unit that we provide. So that's the saving and loading done for the functionality of it anyway, on the character uh, for the battle. So now let's set it up so at the start of the game and this level, it will load that data and at the end, it will save that data. Let's go to the game mode. And let's go to begin play on here. Getting kind of long now, begin play, isn't it? Um, and then on the completed here, over at the end, we are going to load the data in. In fact, actually, I might actually do this right at the start. Make a bit more sense. Um, yeah, okay. In fact, what we'll do is we'll do it over here when we get all actors of class. So for the party, we'll bring that up here. Because then what we can do is use this array here and do a for each loop. Plug that in. And we're going to take it to load the data. Now, loading is needs to access the game instance. Now, we could just right click, get game instance, cast the game instance, get the save data, and so forth. However, what I'm going to do here is make a global function library that anything can access because many other objects will need to do the exact same thing. So I can go to here, go to blueprints, and get a blueprint function library. And we call this one um, J. RPG library. I'm going to put them in my data folder. And in there, we're going to make a function and we're going to do get save file. And in get save file, we're going to get game instance. And from there, cast to our JRPG game instance. And Get the save game object the save game data and we want to know whether or not this is accurate or not and whether we got it correctly or, or, or successful in the end so we're going to add a return node and the return node is going to have one output on it and that's going to be a boolean and that be success 
Uh, actually, we make two outputs, sorry. So it'll be success, and it'll be have also the save game object. And that'll be of the type save game data. And that'll go into there and go across here and tick the success box. And then I'm going to duplicate the return node and I'll put that into cast failed and untick that. I'm also going to put in another one of those. So I'm going to copy and paste this. Actually, no, we'll leave it like that. Um, we then want to take the save game data and check if it's valid or not. So it is valid. Put that in here. And it's valid to go across to this. If it's not valid, it'll go down to return node and output nothing and false. And I'm also going to make this get save file a pure call as well. Okay, so what I have to do now is go to my game mode in my hip and search for get save file. And now we've got access to that function. And what I'm going to do here is get a save game object in a branch after success body. And here we'll do load party unit information. That's going to request a party unit, which comes from here. When on completed, we'll resume everything else that's going on here. Okay. Compile and save that. So that's loading the party data. We now want to save the party data. And we could put it into a couple of places, but I'm thinking of putting it into the victory screen. So we'll go up to the victory screen widget. And there. And in here, we want to detect when this animation is finished and start a timer. So we're going to right click and do animation finished. And you should see the one with the brackets show screen. So when that particular animation is finished, we're going to put a delay in. And before the delay, we're going to save our game. So get save file. This is what I mean, the function library comes in handy because you can just call this wherever you want. And plug that in. And then we'll take the save game object and do save uh, party unit information. True. Now this is going to be on a for loop, or for each loop. So we've got the player actors, we're going to drag this out and do a for each. Plug that in there. And on loop body, we're going to do save party information. The party unit is going to be the array element, like so. And information we're going to get from the party character. So let's just take that from there. And so from the array element, drag out and get combat component, because we need that. And we're going to split the information here. Or you can make it whichever one you want to do. So from the combat component, we need the XP current. Put that into there. Um, on the unit level, we're going to get from there, unit level. Go there. HP current is going to come from the array element itself. HP current. There. And then MP current. there okay so we're now setting and saving the information to the save file and because the save uh, functionality is doing all the work for us that's all we have to do here just give it the information we want to save and it'll save it on completed uh, I just realized we also want to put the, the delay here at the start of this function uh, so here because we only want to save it once it's finished adding all the XP on we don't want it to save before then so we do that and we'll delay it for uh, five seconds. Okay, that'd be plenty of time. So on the, over the five after the five seconds, it will save the game, and on completed, we're going to tell it to rem, uh, remove the widget from the parent. We will then tell it to open a new level. So go open level, and it'll be by object reference, and this will be the level that we want to go back to once the battle is finished. Now, at the moment, we're not setting the level when we join the battle, but we will do later in another episode. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose my streets level. We'll come back to this when we want to do this better. And that's it. So all we have to do now is tell our game 
mode, uh, sorry, our game here to use that game instance. So you go to project settings, go to maps and modes, and at the bottom you see game instance. Change that to JRPG game instance. So let's test this out in our game. And immediately I can see an issue where our MP and HP have been set to zero. Now the reason why that's happening is because the information that we're getting from the load doesn't exist yet because we haven't saved the game first. So what we need to do is find a way to indicate that this is the first time loading the game. Therefore, don't call the load function to change stuff. So we're going to go to the save game data. Make a new variable and we'll call this one um, to be loaded. And the default value for to be loaded is going to be set to um, true. Okay. And on the load part information, we're going to drag to be loaded, get, and then from there, we'll put in a branch. And if that is true, it's going to go across to that. After that check, we then want to go to the event graph and go to the save game party information. And when it has saved here, we're then going to drag in our to be loaded and do set that to be true. And because then it's going to save game to start, it will save the to be loaded as well. So next time it loads up, it should be okay with this. Okay. Then we'll go to the game instance. And when we create a new slot, which is this bottom one down here, create a new save game object. We're going to take the save game object here and set to be loaded. I'm going to set that to false. Oh, and save that. So now let's now test this out. Hit play. And let's play, complete a uh, battle. Attack the target. And do some magic. And magic again. Okay, so Gideon and Greystone both have 44 MP left. And Greystone should level up as well. And after a certain amount of time, this will disappear and go to our level. And when it does that, it's going to save the game. Okay, now it's saved the game. So now if I go back and play it. The load game should be allowed, and there you go. We've now got 44 health here, and Greystone's leveled up, and he's now level 5. So he should do more attack because he's higher level now. So I go into here, attack. Yeah, maybe not too much health, <laughs> but. Okay, so at the end now we should see his level is now different. So he's level 5 already, now level 6, and so on and so forth. Okay. Brilliant. So all we have to do now is save our inventory that we're getting from the game as well. So on the uh, save game data, what we're going to do now is we're going to save the inventory. So we're going to create a custom event and call it uh, save inventory and for this we need to add the input for the player controller player controller and we'll use our player controller and we're going to use our player controller here and when we do save inventory the save inventory is going to happen two times one time uh, when in the field using a different player controller and one time in the uh, battle when we're using the battle player controller so we need to do a check to see which one this belongs to. So we can take player controller here and cast to the battle player controller. And I'm going there. And if it is the battle player controller, we're going to get from there the inventory. Get item inventory. And then from that, we want to set that to the player inventory on here. So. We're then going to take it to save game to slot. So I'm just going to copy this and paste that here. 
now save the game we then want to do a, a load game load inventory uh, so new custom event sorry load inventory and in this one we're going to also need the player controller so in here player controller that would be the player controller class and again we're going to cast to our battle player controller and from there we're going to do set inventory uh, item inventory it's called That's it. and plug that into there and we're going to drag in our player inventory from our save file that's it from there so that's all we need to do here we when we add the field player controller in a later episode we'll add them to the cast files as well here so if it isn't adding it to the player controller on the battle mode it'll add it to the field character instead so they both work in unison but now we're adding items to our characters so let's go and add these functions to our various parts so I'm going to go to the victory screen. So then on the completed, because we have to do it once, we're going to get the save file. Okay, which it should be true because it's only doing this if it's true. Um, so to get save game object here, and we can do save inventory. That's going to ask for player controller. We can just plug in the get player controller. Okay. Oh, and save that's the saving part and then the loading part is going to happen on the player controller player controller and we go begin play here we're going to uh, get a save file and put branch in if it's successful and if it is we're going to tell the save game object here to load inventory and the player controller we're plugging into here is going to be self. Okay, and that's it. Save that. And that'll bring us and set up our inventory. So now when we're picking up items at the end, we're saving them to a save file. And when we start a new battle or go into the field, we've got those items with us now. And uh, yeah. And there you go. We've now got a functioning saving and loading system to allow us to take items from one fight to the next. In the next episode, we're going to work on the last entry on our action menu, which is the techniques entry. Talking about how to create the still technique and putting it onto the screen in the form of UI. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can find all my episodes early before anyone else from just $1 a month. A massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for the continued support. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.